Recently, I went to Annapolis, Maryland to spend a few days with my parents. Both of my parents are in their 90s and are now at a point in their lives where they need full-time nursing care. I brought them communion, which I know they always appreciate. When I walked into their apartment, I found my father fast asleep in the recliner chair. My mother was sitting by the sliding glass door, staring out into the courtyard. She was saying her rosary. When my mother saw me, her face glowed as she greeted me. After receiving communion with great devotion, my mother spent some time in quiet prayer, while my father, like the apostles in the garden, continued to sleep. Turning to me with a beautiful smile, she said, God has been so good to us. She then told me to remember to thank God for life's blessings. At first I was amazed and then overwhelmed with gratitude because the one thing that her dementia had not obliterated or altered was her attitude of gratitude, a characteristic that has always permeated my mother's life. Almost every day when I awaken, it is morning before it is morning. Darkness still hovers, and as I wait for the dawn under my covers, I can hear it even before I see it. Of course, the most obvious sound is the cacophony of traffic driving along Tremont Street. But then there are the slight sounds of attunement as a chorus of birds assembles in our courtyard. Slowly they gather into one concerted song of supplication, which almost sounds as though they're singing, let it begin, let it begin, may it begin again. The birds are of one accord. They do not take the dawn for granted. When it bursts upon them again, they give thanks once again for this once only day to begin. How different creatures as simple and lowly as the birds are from us. They approach each day as if it were the beginning of creation. While so many of us start our day in a rather mechanical way, jarred into motion by some kind of alarm. We have set the time to begin, and so we believe, and thus we take the possibility of each new day for granted. And what we take for granted easily becomes just another thing in our lives, something else to be worked on, managed or consumed. Sadly, the realities we take for granted can no longer be recognized as amazing grace, and therefore they hardly ever evoke a sense of gratitude. Gratitude is more than just a feeling. It's an attitude, a stance before life. An attitude of gratitude anchors us in hope that whatever sufferings the circumstances of life inflict upon us, all is meaningful in God's regard for us. All has led to the present moment of our lives, and life itself is good. That's why I love Mary's Magnificat. It is her song of gratitude for God. It is a song of gratitude that she sings constantly, like the birds in the morning, recognizing the greatness of God in the present moment, rejoicing in the mercy of God, even in the darkness. It is her call to us to remember and be grateful for God's blessings in the midst of our ordinary and burdened lives like my mother with dementia at 92, 
who still experiences a sense of gratitude. I have said before, and I'm going to say it again, it's not what we do, but who we are that is precious in God's sight. What had Mary done to be chosen as the mother of Jesus? What have I achieved in my lifetime is not the appropriate question for the later years of our life. Who am I at this moment? That is the question. It is the quality of love with which we live our lives that is so important. I once spent several afternoons in a hospital with a religious nun who was in terminal stages of cancer. At different times, she would often awake and share stories of her life. She had many happy memories, but one thing troubled her. For many years, she had been praying for reconciliation between her mother and her younger sister. The sister had married a man whom the mother disapproved of. The sister was angry and hurt by her mother's rejection of her husband, and thus she severed relations with her mother. And as years passed, the alienation hardened into a bitterness on both sides. On the last afternoon that I had visited the dying nun, her brother brought her elderly and widowed mother to visit her. Shortly after they arrived, the door of the hospital room opened very cautiously and the alienated sister peered into the room. Her eyes met her mother's eyes. There was a silence. Then, in a mutual movement, the mother and daughter crossed the room and embraced each other in tears. Years of pain and resentment were washed away by a reconciliation that changed this hardened resentment into gratitude. Mary's Magnificat, her canticle of gratitude, proclaims that with God all things are possible. In this season of ordinary time, in which we live routine lives, Mary stands between the ordinary and extraordinary as she encourages us on our journey. We need her. She is our sole friend, our counselor, our spiritual director. She is our refuge, our hope, our life.